Yeah, thank you everybody for joining today. Uh, my name is Josh and I'm with FrontFunder. Um, today we're going to get into discussion on Bopper Equity crowdfunding campaign that is currently live on FrontFunder as they raise capital to accelerate their business model and uh, deliver a platform for ethical compensation uh, to artists uh, through advertising and, and, and brand content. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get things going now. Um, before we get started today, um, I just want to cover a few uh, disclosures. Um, we will be uh, discussing forward-looking information in today's uh, presentation. Um, so th there's no uh, sure um, uh, site that anything discussed uh, will, will come into fruition. Uh, so we are just, um, yeah, just to disclose that ahead of time. Uh, and yeah, before further ado, I'll pass things off to Gabrielle Bouchard, who can uh, kick things off and introduce you to Bopper. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Yes. Start my video. Can you see my presentation now? No? OK, let's go back here. Share screen. There you go. Now, now we should be fine, right? Perfect. All right, here we go. Well, good morning if you're on the West Coast and afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, we're very excited to share with you uh, how Bopper is planning to transform the way brands and TV producers and uh, movie producers are buying their music right now and uh, by introducing a, a more ethical business model for uh, the music suppliers. So you've probably all heard about the debate uh, around all artists are getting compensation uh, compensated on a streaming platform right now. Uh, this is a reality on the B2C side. It's very hard for an artist to make a living out of their streaming revenues. And we're basically uh, seeing a similar situation on the B2B side, meaning when advertising agencies, brands, trailer houses, TV producers want to buy um, music online uh, and uh, uh, basically are turning to um, stock music platform to do this because they, 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 they like how fast and easy it is. Um, but the, the problem with most of the stock music, with all the stock music platforms right now, is that their, their business model uh, are pretty much, uh, pretty, pretty much all the same, meaning that in order to provide a very inexpensive price, uh, to a client and turn a profit, they basically have to squeeze the music suppliers, which means very little money for music suppliers. So basically, this is uh, the problem that, that we're attacking at Bopper. We really want to uh, champion the use of indie music uh, from uh, brand content producers. Uh, and, and in order to achieve this, we know that we have to make it as easy for them uh, to buy uh, music from, from indie uh, musicians that it is to buy stock music. So that's the prerequisite. And this is exactly what Bopper uh, is addressing. And I will be more than happy to, uh, to share how we're doing this with you. Uh, just to get an idea of the space, the, uh, the, the market opportunity right now, uh, uh, audio video music licensing represents a, a $6.4 billion market uh, worldwide. Most of it, I would say close to 50% coming from the US market. And the very specific segment that we're after uh, is what we call the recorded music uh, segment, which is basically um, the ability for a, a, a company to license music that already exists uh, and in our case to license it through a web platform and this is this segment of the market is booming right now uh, uh, last year alone we saw a growth of 54 percent year over year and this is mostly driven by the number of productions uh, that 
ad agencies have to deliver on a weekly basis and thanks to uh, social media advertising and also on the number of TV productions coming from TV streaming platforms such as uh, Netflix or Hulu who are really hungry for content and in each of the uh, episode of a series, for instance, there's always like three, four, five different songs being used. So those two phenomenons together are really driving uh, the growth for the uh, recorded music market. Unfortunately, uh, emerging artists right now are not benefiting from this growth. And the reason for that is that, as I mentioned, stock music libraries have been for the last 10 years, the only way for, for companies to buy music instantly uh, on the web. And obviously, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the business model there is not in favor of the artists. So basically uh, what we did a few years back, we sat down, we realized there was a huge appetite from uh, brands and TV producers to use the very best emerging artists music in their production, but the traditional music licensing process was so complicated, took so long that it often became a major obstacle for them to use that kind of, uh, of uh, great music. So basically the team at Bopper sat down and look at all the main obstacles preventing clients from using independent music more often and address them one by one into what is now the, uh, the Bopper platform. So um, I'll go a bit more than I do usually into the product, uh, the technology. Um, there are mainly four main obstacles that were identified. The first one is how quickly can I find a track that, that meets a creative brief? Because this is the reality, whether for a TV producer or an ad agency, uh, they're, they're starting their, their, the search process with a very specific creative brief in mind, and then they have to find the needle in a haystack. Uh, they could spend days and if not weeks on music uh, streaming platform, try to find the right track. It's time consuming. And if there's one thing that agencies don't have is time. So basically the first step for us was to really streamline uh, the search process so we've built a search engine that is specifically designed for ad agencies using their own criteria uh, so they can zoom in the right tracks as quickly as possible. And this could take a few minutes and you'll see that in the entire process, it's probably what's taking the longest uh, when you're using Bopper, but a few minutes compared to a few days or a few weeks if you do it manually. The, and obviously, we're leveraging technology such as machine, uh, machine learning and, and artificial int intelligence and other uh, AI technology specific to the music industry to accelerate the search process. The second step is the, the price negotiation. So what our, our, uh, the agencies told us is basically it's one thing to find a track but then I have to get in touch with an artist that is probably touring or at least before COVID and they're, they're, they're coming back now, but they're, they're on tour. So it's sometimes it could take them days, if not weeks to get back uh, to the ad agency. And then many of them don't have a very um, uh, objective way of, of putting a value on their music because they're, they're not familiar with the process. They don't know what the ad market is willing to pay uh, based on how the track is gonna be used. So all kinds of considerations that make it really difficult and, and time consuming for agencies to, uh, to uh, embark into a, a price negotiation process. So what we did uh, at Bopper, and this is really at the core of our differentiation in the market is that we've built a technology that allows us to price each track individually based on two things. First thing, the, the, the license term. So how, how the track is gonna be used for how long in which market, in what media, et cetera. And big differentiator for, for Bopper, the artist's popularity. 
So if you're choosing a track and the artist has a one hundred thousand uh, dollar follower base, or versus one that has a two million two million followers, obviously it should be reflected in the price, and that's exactly what the technology does, and it does it instantly. So you enter as a customer, you enter the terms, and all the tracks are getting priced based. Uh, based on the terms, obviously, and the artist popularity. Why is it so important? Obviously, because it reduces uh, the, the, the entire music licensing um, significantly, the time it takes to license a track, because it really speeds up one major component, which is price negotiation. But an additional benefit is since we're, we're able to track each track individually, it means more money for artists compared to the traditional uh, stock music libraries. And more money for the artists trend also translate into better artists and a better catalog available for, um, for uh, ad agencies and TV producers. So the artists that are dealing with us, uh, that are putting their music on Bopper, expect to make more money and they would never put their music on the stock music library because they don't want to devalue uh, their music. So uh, a lot of benefits coming from this proprietary technology that we created for pricing our tracks. Uh, I already mentioned this. One of the, the key elements for, for uh, clients is the quality of the catalog, the quality of the music. And by quality, we mean Obviously, the creative aspect, the creative strength of the, uh, the music, so this ability to generate uh, emotional bonds with an audience, obviously, that's what brands are looking for, or even a TV show is, trying, is using music to increase uh, the emotional uh, connection with the audience. Um, so that... So that's one aspect. The other aspect is the, 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 the quality of the production for the music. So basically, we're very picky at Bopper. Uh, we, uh, we listen to every track before it gets put on the, uh, on the platform. And we make sure that it meets the standards that a major brand like Rolex, like BMW, which are clients of ours, uh, would, would expect uh, from a music supplier. So that's very important as well. And obviously, it translates into what is being considered as the best uh, recorded music catalog available on the web right now. And obviously, um, um, licensing a track is a very tedious process because you have you may have many different uh, right owners uh, who owns a piece of, of of the track, and no agency would like to take the risk of not being 100% sure that all this research and all, all the participants have been cleared before, before using a track because this could lead to major legal issues. So this is one of the added value that Bopper brings to the table is that every track that, uh, that is available through our platform has been pre-cleared before. So we've done that work prior to uploading the track, which we're pretty much the only one in the industry that does this. It's a lot of work, but again, uh, it translates into a major benefit from our, for our customers because they don't have to go through this tedious process that would add some more days, if not weeks to the process. So we basically, it, Bopper really allows um, a, a brand, for instance, to license the very best independent and emerging music as easily as it is to buy stock music, but obviously accessing much better music at a fair price for the artist. Uh, talking about price, our business model, we basically take a commission, a 50% uh, commission on every transaction. And just to give you an idea, uh, uh, stock music library, for instance, some of them charge uh, a flat fee per track, let's say $99 they, to their clients. They need to make a profit. Imagine 
uh, how much an artist uh, gets at the end of the transaction. Very, very, uh, just a few bucks. That's the reality. And that's why we say this is not an ethical business uh, model. At Bopper, our average transaction is $4,000. And it ranges from $500 for a short-term social media ad, for instance. And last year, we sold a $200,000 license um, for a major uh, uh, national TV campaign. So as you can see, if we take 50% commission, it leaves real money in the artist's pockets or the right holders. Sometimes it's, it's an independent label. Um, Bopper um, sold for $150,000 its first year's uh, go to market back in 2020. In 2021, we sold for $850,000. Uh, there's one area that where there's a lot of experience uh, on the leadership team is how to scale uh, a, a business, how to bring a technology to market globally. Uh, and basically this is what we're doing at Bopper right now. And uh, 91% of, of that uh, $850,000 came from uh, the US market. We're based in Canada. So it's considered that's an export market for us. And that's our core uh, focus, short-term focus is the US market because it, as I mentioned, it represents 50% of uh, the, the total global market. So we have basically uh, two ways of generating revenues. Uh, one is through our e-commerce platform. So as I mentioned, we're the only platform that allows for instant pricing and an individual pricing of each track on the web. Uh, and this drives 40% uh, of our sales uh, right now. And we also offer a service uh, delivery mode to ad agencies. Uh, because as you know, probably ad agencies have been having the same buying behavior for over a century. When they need a track, uh, they tend to send a brief to music suppliers and music suppliers came back with their playlists and they choose from the different playlists. And at Bopper, again, our technology really uh, helps us to differentiate ourselves in the market in the sense that we're able to get back to clients that are sending us a brief within three working hours. That's our commitment. Um, it will take a few days to other music <clears throat> vendors, sorry, uh, to get back with a playlist. But because of our technology and the competitive edge it gives us, uh, we're committing on getting back to them within three hours. Actually, our average turnaround is less than an hour right now. And we've also built, as an additional channel, a value-added reseller a network of 27 resellers all over the world. Uh, these are mostly um, music production studios that often get uh, requests from their client not to produ produce custom music, but to go and conduct a search of existing recorded music. And this is when they reach out to us. And we, as I mentioned, we've built a, a network of 27 of them. It's growing uh, monthly by one or two. So uh, we're still uh, expanding this network. A few uh, metrics. We've been uh, going to market for two years now. So 2021 was really the first year where we were there for the entire year. Uh, we're still with limited resources, but at least we were able to start gathering some some historical KPIs. Uh, the ones that are the most important to me is obviously the, the annual growth one from 150,000 to 850,000 uh, in sales with the same resources. Um, also, uh, there were over 7,200 accounts created on the platform in 2021. Uh, remember, we're talking about a B2B business. So uh, 7,000 in a year of, of potential clients coming, companies uh, with interest of, of dealing with Bopper is, is a fairly good number. Uh, one of the things that we're very proud of is that 61% of the briefs we're getting through the service uh, delivery mode uh, are coming from returning customers. So basically 
Uh, we know that the 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 bopper the bopper proposition is uh, is is very sticky out there with our clients. They like how fast it is, how easy it is, how safe it is from a legal standpoint, and obviously they love the quality of the music, so they keep coming back to the point where we became the go-to destination for some of our clients. They start with us, and then if they don't find what they're looking for, they're going to go elsewhere because it's going to take more time. It's going to be a bit more uh, complicated. Um, and we've also um, became the approved vendor of the five, uh, the top five ad groups in the world. Uh, we're talking about uh, publicists, about uh, YPP, uh, Omnicom, each of these companies owns uh, thousands of ad agencies. So this gives us access to a huge pool of uh, potential clients. Uh, quickly, the leadership team. Uh, we have experience uh, at, the, uh, at the helm. Uh, personally, I've been, uh, I started my career uh, in the mid eighties in ad agencies uh, and then uh, went to the, on the client side and then came back in advertising agency, uh, specialized in recruiting. And then I became involved uh, back in 1996 in launching a global uh, online recruitment brand, uh, which maybe you know, it was called monster.com. I played a huge role in scaling uh, monster.com globally. And this is the experience that I'm now applying uh, um, on Bopper. And obviously, Greg is our ma mastermind when it comes to choosing the music and interacting with the labels and the, uh, and, and the artists. Andrew Pack is our chief uh, technical officer. Um, he's been uh, with the company for many years. He's uh, the one really behind uh, the, the user friendliness of the platform. And we have other people in marketing, sales, um, that are uh, experienced people as well. So there's experience in this business on how to scale a business globally. And it's one thing to create a great platform, but it's, uh, it's also very important to know how to monetize it on a global scale. And we have this experience. Our board of director, um, we have uh, people, the Phil Messier, who's the founder of uh, Bopper with a very uh, solid experience in music production. Uh, he's the, the, the inspiration and the mastermind behind uh, the, 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 the Bopper platform. Uh, Gilles Labranche and Robert Charpentier are from uh, our main investor, uh, Le FIC, Le Fonds d'Investissement en Culture Communication, which is a VC specialized uh, in the uh, communication and culture industries. And it's, mo it's funded largely by the uh, Le Fond de la FTQ, uh, which is a major investment fund here uh, in Quebec. And Francoise Lyon, uh, Francoise is now sits on the board of Le Fond de la FTQ and also brings us a lot of ex experience uh, and, and um, uh, sitting on boards and obviously a huge network of uh, potential investors from family offices all over the world. So briefly, um, I mean, the company started, uh, Phil Macy started working on the technology back in 2013. It was basically a pet project back then because it was still uh, the owner of a major uh, music production studio. Uh, work on the technology, uh, uh, on a part-time basis until 2019, where he felt that the technology was re uh, ready to go to market. That's when I came on board. I was recruited to, as the CEO, to take uh, the business globally. Uh, as I mentioned, we started slowly in 2020, uh, really got our things together in 2021. and 2022, essentially, we're at the stage of it's time to press the accelerator increase our coverage of the US, sales, US uh, ad market, and then in 2023, uh, expand to other markets, uh, other major advertising markets throughout the world. So that's basically the plan. So as you can see, um, we're, we're, we're ramping up 
Uh, we're generating revenues, uh, which basically for me means that there is interest from the market uh, for our value proposition. And this was achieved essentially with very limited resources. We were bootstrapped uh, from a sales and marketing standpoint, two reps and a few thousand dollars of uh, um, uh, um, advertising available. But you can see that is really gaining traction and um, we, we just want to accelerate this with this round. Sales forecast, um, it, it might uh, look uh, aggressive. What's important to understand is what's driving the growth. Uh, so following the, the closing of this round, our goal is to go from two reps to 40 reps, inside sales reps over the next two years, uh, increase significantly increase our marketing budget to drive leads to the sales force and transactions on the platform. And thirdly, we want to expand our value added reseller um, network uh, globally. So there are, uh, we're talking about significant investment in sales and marketing to support that kind of growth. And personally, this is the type of growth that I, that I saw at Bopper uh, a few years back and at Workopolis, which I, I was the CEO of uh, as well when we did the same thing, scaling the sales and marketing investment. So one of the things that I really like about Bopper is the, the, the growth opportunity. So there are different ways, uh, different opportunities that we could leverage in order to accelerate our growth. Obviously now, our focus is on the US ad market, uh, but in 2021, 15% uh, of our revenue came from uh, TV producers in the US, in the Los Angeles market. So we, we, we didn't um, invest any effort in going after that segment. It's just the quality of our catalog that attracted their attention and obviously, uh, the ease of, of licensing music through Bopper. So we know that there's a segment there as well that uh, we're going to go, uh, we're planning on going after in 2022. Uh, but if we stick to the, our, the core strategy, which is the core segment, which is uh, advertising agencies, uh, first step is to really improve our coverage of the US market, which is what we're doing with this round. Then next step is to go uh, um, after the other major uh, ad markets throughout the world. So we're talking about Paris, we're talking about uh, London, Germany, uh, et cetera. And obviously we have other segments like TV producers that we could go after globally. Uh, we're starting to get uh, traction with the gaming industries Obviously, they're looking for music either for their games or for the trailers uh, that they will use to promote their games. Uh, trailer houses is the same thing. So there are many, many opportunities uh, uh, that could keep feeding our growth moving forward. But the priority right now is really to focus on the low-hanging fruit, which is the US, uh, the US market on a short-term basis. Um, there is a buzz around Bopper right now in the industry. Uh, this is just a, a few of the media mentions that we got in 2021. I'm inviting you if you have a chance to read them. Uh, but there's definitely a buzz happening right now, both on the music side with artists and labels realizing that there's a, a better way for them to monetize their, their music when it comes to uh, brand content and, and, and TV content, uh, but on the advertising side as well. So there, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of these articles that are talking about uh, how Bopper is, is bringing a, a more ethical uh, business model and obviously give them, uh, um, provide them with an easy access to their very best emerging music. Um, that they, uh, they would like to use more, but they were a bit resistant before for the reason I mentioned to you before. So the round, uh, from a financial standpoint, we're working with a, on a $3 million round. 
these are the, the, the main sources uh, that we're looking uh, at. The FIC will convert part of uh, the current debt. Uh, they will add some money. Uh, Filaction, which is uh, uh, similar to the FTQ, uh, is, uh, is uh, considering investing a quarter of a million in that round. Uh, we're in discussion with private investors. And I want to talk about equity crowdfunding, why we decided to, uh, to use Front Funder. Uh, it's an interesting story. And I think it, 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 taught, it, it speaks volume about the values of, of the people at Bopper. So the story goes like this, and it's a real story. Uh, we, uh, we placed a small a track on a small uh, campaign, uh, like two weeks social media. Uh, for an artist, and the uh, the price was five hundred dollars. So we're there, and we have a five hundred dollar check to return to the artist, and and we start talking about. Don't forget, this is way more than if they would have placed that that track through a um, through a stock music library, but it's still five hundred dollar. We all know that these artists were two years without being able to get revenues. Their main source of revenues being live shows and merchandise uh, sales. They were two years without that revenue, $500, it's not much. And we said, is there a way we could do more for, our, for, our, for the artists? And somebody came out with the great idea of why don't we allow them to become, uh, to own a piece of Bopper? But you can imagine that having 3,000 investors who would put $500 or $250 there becomes a bit of a nightmare to manage. And this is when we, uh, we uh, learn about FrontFonder. And FrontFonder is exactly, this is a reason why we decided to keep part of our round uh, for basically for available to our artists and to to our business community and any individuals who really want to help us pursue our mission of bring a, a, a more ethical business model in the music industry. So this is really a, one of the reasons, uh, one, the key reason we decided to, to, keep, to really use a part of the, of the round and dedicate it to uh, equity, equity crowdfunding. What are we gonna do with uh, that money? Well, as I mentioned, the top priority for us right now is really to increase our, our presence in the US market. So we're gonna beef up significantly our inside sales team uh, and increase our marketing uh, uh, budget. Marketing in our case has placed three roles, build a brand awareness, obviously, drive leads to the sales force and drive transactions on the platform. So most of the round will be uh, use for this. Uh, we want to beef up, obviously, our technology. Uh, our, our obsession from a technology standpoint is always to how can we make it faster, easier for clients to find the right track as quickly as possible. And we have a product roadmap of things we would like to do. And that's what we're, we're going to do in order to make it uh, even easier to get to the right track as, as quickly as possible. Obviously, we want to protect some of our innovation. And there's obviously, we're going to have to add some people like in HR and uh, accounting to support our growth. So that's, but as you can see, most of the uh, use of fund will be for our, our goal, will go against our go to market strategy. So I will uh, conclude on uh, this. Um, Sync Tank is really the, the trade pod. It's really the reference in our industry. Sync, for those of you who may not, who may not uh, know, is a term we use when we're, we're talking about putting music on a, an ad. For instance, it's called synchronization or sync. Uh, sync Tank is really the, 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 the main ref, the reference in the industry. And in a recent article in last October, they really uh, identified Bopper as the one to watch in the industry uh, in the way we're, we're approaching this challenge. So uh, this, is, uh, this is it for me. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. And uh, I guess we'll open the, up the floor to questions if we have any questions out there. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. That was an excellent presentation. It was uh, so nice to learn more about Buffer and hear all about your guys' plans for expansion and future growth and development as you're really uh, tackling an important problem in the music licensing space. Um, so yeah, why don't we turn it over to the audience for questions. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box down at the bottom uh, of your webinar screen. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll begin uh, just asking Gabrielle some questions that have come through already. So our first question that's come through is, celebrities such as Taylor Swift are increasingly more outspoken about how emerging and new artists are not fairly compensated for their work. Tell us about how Bopper is at the forefront of a massive wave of change in the music industry. Absolutely. So what, what, uh, <clears throat> what she's referring to is basically on the consumer side. So the fact that <clears throat> for, for emerging artists, obviously, streaming revenues are almost, uh, I mean, it, 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 it would take a million uh, streams to get the equivalent of what the what an artist will get through bopper to place on a small uh, on a small campaign so obviously um as i explained at the beginning that we have a similar issue on the b2b side where the existing uh, business models which are mainly those from uh, stock music libraries um are 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 are, are not in favor of the artists so basically there's a big benefit for the client because they're going to pay really a very small amount for a track. Uh, there's a benefit for the stock music library who will take a cut in the, in the process. But as I mentioned, it leaves very little uh, for the artist. So in our case, it's a, it's a ref share approach. And obviously, uh, each transaction, each ticket is way higher than what you would pay on a stock music library. So this is how we're <clears throat> sorry, trying to address uh, this issue on the B2B side of, of, of the industry. Excellent. Thank you, Gabrielle. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Um, great, great to hear that, uh, you know, it's, it is such a widespread, um, you know, problem that people are really starting to think of and that Bopper is tackling it from the, the other side of the coin. Um, the next question here is, how does the traditional music licensing process work and how does Bopper dramatically improve the process for those seeking music license? Um, the, the process is, is still fairly manual. So the way it has been for the last uh, 100 years is basically uh, uh, um, you, get, you get a brief. Okay, a company would get a brief, they would reach out to their music suppliers, it would take a few days, they would get uh, music back, uh, they would present the music to the client, they're going through an approval process, a track is chosen, and now we're talking in terms of days, every time I add one, I add a few days to each step, right, it's a very tedious process, and then they finally agree on a track, oh, now we have to negotiate the price. So going back to the rights owners, it could take days, weeks to, to, uh, to uh, come, come out with a price. Then so in, in many occasions, in some occasion, uh, there won't be any agreement. So we have to go back and start the process all over again with a different track, right? Uh, don't forget ad agencies don't want to promise a track to a client and then come back two weeks later and say, oh, we weren't able to come to an agreement on the pricing. So, um, so uh, from there, one, the pricing, people have agreed on the pricing, you have to clear the tracks. So clearing tracks is a very complicated process because there could be a lot of people involved and they all have to agree on the terms of the, of, of the deal. Uh, once again, it takes only one who says, no, I don't want to do this. And then you have to go back to choosing a different track. So you can imagine in average, we all of this happens automatically on Bopper, right? Within a question of seconds or minutes, the longest part of the process is finding the track. But once you've found the track, you know immediately if it's going to fit your budget, and you know the, the track has been pre-cleared, so you will avoid all of this. So we're, we're basically turning what could be a six-week, four, eight-week process into something that takes just a few minutes. That's how we're addressing this. But it's still a very 
there are still companies out there that are offering this service and will go through this entire process. It's it, it, it's doable when it when an ad concept is based on a very popular track. So uh, the ad the ad agency came out with a concept. It all evolves around a, a track from the Rolling Stones, for instance they know that they're going to have to take into account the fact they are going to have to go through the entire process and negotiate and all that stuff. It's okay. The concept is based on that track, but when it's not the case, uh, they don't have the time uh, to, they don't have weeks to spend to clear a track from an emerging artist. So, and this is where our, our value proposition becomes very attracting to them is that they, they, they can access much better music than stock music but as easily as, as I mentioned before. Thanks so much, Gabriel. It's incredible to see the value that Buffer's adding to such a you know, previously archaic industry. I can see the benefits uh, you know, tenfold on, on how you know, it makes things easier, both for, for artists in terms of receiving fair compensation and for ads and brand content. It's extremely appealing and I'm sure that's why Buffer's gained so much traction today. Yeah, the market um, is is rewarding us right now. I would say that's that's how I see it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's it's really great to see. Um, the next question here that's come through is: It's becoming increasingly more understood that artists are often not compensated fair, fairly in music licensing deals. Why does this occur? Um, it's the economy. Uh, basically doesn't value as much as it used to uh, the creation of music, okay? It, it, it started with uh, uh, the first music uh, file sharing uh, platform in the early 2000s, where basically we saw that the value of music started going down. Uh, on the B2B side, I mean, uh, uh, brands have been paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for licenses uh, for the last 50 years, probably. Uh, but what's happening right now is, it, as I mentioned, is the number of productions that they have to deal with. When I started in, in ad agencies many years ago, we, we may have had five or six productions every year that required music. Now with social media, it's like it could be 10 per week. So the, the, there's an increasing demand for, for music that you can license instantly. So the, the problem is that the only option available up to now uh, came from that first generation of, of, uh, of uh, platform, which were uh, stock music libraries. So that's very rarely the first business model uh, that came around um, and it was uh, it was limited by technology and whatever and there was a huge supply of music available not always of great quality but at least there there was tons of music and they came out with a business model that basically is all share share the same uh, the, the, the same id which is to in order to offer low prices, make a cut. Unfortunately, the artists will, will get the low end of the stick. Uh, but now because of the technology, AI, things like this, we can introduce something different to the market. And that's what we're doing in order, at least for, those, for these artists that have music, that have a fan base, that have music that drives emotion, uh, you know, for them to have a conduit to connect with ad agencies and and get fairly compensated compensated for it. Excellent. Thanks so much, Gab, for describing that. It's uh, you know, it's it really shed some light on the on the problem that uh, you know artists are facing in terms of receiving ethical compensation for music. And it's really great that Boffer's entire business model centers around ensuring that that value is delivered. And especially as consumers are becoming so much more conscious of purchase decisions in general, um, it really aligns well uh, with uh, that. I, I mean, and it, consumers and brands, and don't forget brands are working really hard at making sure they're socially responsible, 
Uh, and part of social responsibility is in the way you're treating your, your suppliers, obviously. Think of Absolutely. McDonald's and its ethical coffee coming from ethical farms. And so, I mean, this is obviously, this is becoming increasingly important. They have to report in their annual report the effort they're, they're doing to, be, to become or to, to become a better uh, corporate citizen. And, and music musicians and the music they're using in their in, in their content uh, in, in, in their content and their production, well, they are suppliers too. And, and by when they're using um, stock music, obviously uh, it, it's not an ethical source of music. So basically brands and companies in general are becoming more aware of the importance of treating musicians as well as any other of their suppliers. Uh, that's a, a definitely a, uh, a major trend um, driving uh, Balper's growth right now. Yeah, that, that is incredible. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely, um, it, it's, it's fantastic that Balper's at the forefront of this wave and that, uh, you know, this, uh, that you provide not only a value aligned solution for brands and, and, and advertisers, but also uh, a seamless and easy to use solution. So you're yeah. sort of tackling two major problems in the industry simultaneously, and it's, uh, it's extremely exciting. Um, the next question here is that Bopper is seen, is seen as the most ethical alternative for licensing, for music licensing and for global brands such as Nike, Toyota, and Dyson, as they've all used Bopper licensed music in ads. Um, how does Bopper deliver more fair compensation to artists in comparison to the status quo? Yeah, I would say, to, I mean, it's a twofold question. So the first benefit for the artists is that we're really helping them putting their music in front of buyers exactly when the buyer needs it. Okay, so that's the, the, the first thing. So it's very hard for, for, uh, for an emerging artist or an independent label uh, to connect with ad agencies because they don't have the bandwidth to do this first. And secondly, the ad agencies don't want to receive music if they don't have a brief for it. So that's really the first benefit that we provide is really we're, we're helping them to increase their chances of getting their music found exactly when a client needs it. So that's that's one thing. And it's it's not a it's not a minor thing. It's it's quite major for them to know that they can get easily in front of these people. And the second part, and this is where the fair compensation aspect becomes important, is that if their music is getting chosen, they're going to get real money behind it and not just a few bucks, but uh, as I mentioned, on average, the average transaction is 4000 but we had licenses of $200,000 last year. So it, it means real money for the artists. And this is how, uh, how we're, we're uh, positioning ourselves as, as, as the, the, the offering a fair compensation. And, and it's important, fair compensation uh, among the, the music libraries. So, so, so web platforms where, where you can buy music on the spot. Obviously, there are traditional models uh, representation shops who will try to present music from, from artists uh, to brands or to potential clients, uh, but it's not happening online. And if they cut a deal, obviously there's going to be real money there, but it's not scalable and it's not volume, right? It's just a few tracks from time to time. Uh, with Bopper, among all the players that are providing music online, uh, we're the, the one that are that are returning uh, the most money to the artist. Absolutely, thank you, Gab, for that uh, that detailed explanation. It's really great again just to see how Bopper is really pioneering um, ethical compensation for artists and and really breaking down those barriers for artists to receive the compensation that they deserve for their artwork and and, and uh, especially when it's used at scale. Um, there's a couple other questions here. Uh, the next is what ads or agencies, in addition to the ones that I've already mentioned, or brands have used your music to date? 
Oh, there's a long list. We have a reel uh, available uh, when we're able to get the, 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 the spot from, from our clients. Not always the case. Sometimes we have to chase it a bit. But uh, I mean, we, we, we had over 200 placements last year alone, just to give you an idea. So brands such as uh, Google, uh, Apple are using us, BMW, uh, I mean, uh, Rolex, uh, the Vancouver Canucks <laughs> in your market, uh, Josh. Uh, I mean, it's, it's mostly major brands, uh, Hims and Hers, who's a cosmetic industry in the US, um, L'Oreal, uh, I mean, 200 of them last year. <laughs> I, you know, if, if I don't know what the validation is, uh, that sure sounds like it. Yeah. It's definitely um, great to see that, you know, these, these really large companies and, and the, 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 those who are preparing their ads are seeking Bopper music or Bopper uh, as the, the music licensing tool of choice. Um, one of the I think reasons, it's incredible uh, to see. One of the reasons just that we have access to these uh, high uh, reputable uh, brands is the fact that Bopper has been approved or was approved in 2021 as a, uh, a, an official music vendor for the top five news uh, advertising groups in the world. So the uh, Omnicom group, uh, YPP, et cetera. Uh, it's, a, it's a tedious process to go, to go through, but uh, at the end, when you get that final seal of approval, uh, then you become a, uh, you, bec you have, it gives us access to thousands of agencies. For instance, uh, Omnicom, it's one group, but they own thousands of different agencies and different brands across the, uh, across the planet. So uh, we, we basically have access to uh, the vast majority of the major advertising agencies out there who are managing the major brands. So that's one of the reasons we have such a, a nice roster of brands uh, on our reel. That, that's absolutely incredible. And I imagine that, you know, when, when they know that it aligns with their values, uh, their clients' values, and it's super easy for the agency right. to license the music through Bopper, it's, it's a no-brainer. So right. that's uh, super wins. exciting to hear. And yeah. Absolutely, everybody wins. Um, our, the next question here is, are your artists only from North America, or do you often uh, have artists from elsewhere? We have artists from all over the world, actually. Um, so basically, um, as I mentioned, uh, since our, our focus was uh, advertising music so far, so we basically, we don't represent artists, we represent tracks from artists. So meaning that if uh, we like an artist, we're going to listen to his entire catalog and we're going to select tracks that have the potential uh, to get placed on, a, uh, on an ad. So that's important to understand. So we're sourcing music through different sources. We have a partnership with SoundCloud. So basically a SoundCloud uh, artists who want to get distributed through Bopper, they have to submit their music through SoundCloud and we will, we will listen to it and see if, uh, if there's a potential for, for placement. Um, we also reach out uh, to different artists or different labels. Uh, let's say that we feel that we would like to improve uh, our, 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 our catalog uh, uh, in one specific genre. Uh, we're going to reach out to, to um, artists or, or indie uh, labels who have that kind of music, and we will select tracks from these catalogs. And, and artists can also uh, send us their music through the platform, and we'll, they'll, it's going to go to the same uh, uh, same process, same qualification process. That's excellent. It's really great to hear that there's so much diversity of music, both uh, in the sources of where you're getting it from and, and in the geographic location of where artists are, are from. Um, you know, the SoundCloud uh, referral process seems really incredible and it also seems like a great way to get, you know, new and, and really uh, exciting uh, talent, you know, right from the source. Um, yeah, the next question here is, is there a subscription plan for licenses uh, sort of on the roadmap or will it always be a la carte purchases? Um, this is a good question, right? In order to have a subscription model, we would have to find a way to make sure that the artists will get compensated fairly. 
and it would probably be not $19 uh, per month <laughs> because then it, it's, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't fit in our values, right? Uh, we don't want to return uh, $10 to an artist. It's, and, and there's plenty of other platforms that do this. And I don't think we would add anything special or anything more to the, the current offering that is out there. Um, uh, our, instead of looking at, do we want a subscription model? What we're doing from time to time with major uh, clients is that we can work on a, uh, on a deal where we're gonna, we're gonna set a specific price based on a specific volume uh, of tracks that they want to use during the year. So that is manageable, but again, uh, there's no way you're going to pay $19 for a track on Bopper. It just doesn't make sense. And as I said, many other uh, companies are doing this quite well. So our, our, our main focus is that, is there anything else we could do to provide a better return to the artist? So for instance, we're exploring things like NFTs right now. So uh, in, the, in the B2B setting, uh, is there a way, a, a play that NFTs could play uh, that would provide a better return to the artist? So that's the, it's more the kind of things that we're considering right now uh, than going with a subscription model. But as I mentioned, so for some clients where we're selling, uh, we, we can make arrangement as long as we agree on an average price per track uh, and a specific volume. Thanks so much, Gabriel, for uh, you know diving in and explaining that and, and how the subscription model may not necessarily fit for this style of music licensing and, and for brands and content. Um, you know, it's really great to see and it and it totally makes sense as as to how Whopper is currently operating on an la carte model and how that delivers really good end value to the artists while still being extremely easy for um, brands and ad advertisers uh, in comparison to the status quo of sort of pen and paper licensing. Um, one last question here that I'm just going to ask uh, before we before we wrap up. Um, before I get into it, um, is it, uh, if anyone else uh, attending today has any last questions, so just be sure to get your questions into the Q&A so we can ask right after this, and, or so we can answer right after this. Um, so yeah, um, the last question I have here, Gabrielle, is for those listening in today, why is now a great time to invest and become a co-owner in Bopper? Um. Well, there are very um, positive trends happening in the industry. As I mentioned, uh, the, the, the need, the appetite for recorded music is booming uh, due to uh, the, the quantity of productions that ad agencies have to deal with and the, the growth of the, the, the TV uh, streaming platforms. Um, the second thing is that brands are becoming more and more aware of the importance of treating their, their uh, music suppliers in a, in, in a more ethical way, which is a very favorable trend again. And the third thing is that we've proven that uh, our value proposition resonates uh, with our clients and that the team at Bopper knows how to, how to scale the business. So I think that these, all these things together and uh, means that uh, we're, we're poised for growth and uh, we, uh, we, we're counting on our business community and on anyone who wants to play a role in, 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 in uh, growing and, and developing a more ethical business model uh, as a win-win for both clients and, and, uh, music, uh, and musical artists. Thanks so much, Gabrielle. Um, well, I think that concludes our webinar right at the top of the hour. Um, so thank you everybody for joining today. Um, it's been absolutely incredible, Gabrielle, learning more about uh, about Bopper and what you guys are doing to really uh, drive change in this industry and do so in a, in a very, uh, you know, um, appetizing way for investors as well on the technological innovation front. So it seems like a really great win-win uh, for all parties. Um, for those tuning in today as well, um, if you'd like to invest in Bopper, um, any Canadian is uh, able to invest through FrontFunder at uh, www.frontfunder.com forward slash Bopper. You can also go and check out our website and view the investment opportunities page uh, in which you'll see Bopper's campaign available. 
um, we'd love to have you uh, invest and, and you know help Bopper uh, succeed in this way and 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 you know join as a co-owner in the business as well. So um, if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to the front funder support uh, on the the website. And uh, other than that, thank you all for joining. Thanks, everyone.